What's up, Trojans? Back with another video. Coming to you with a Giants win this week. Uh, didn't get the one out last week. Uh, I, I have a lot to say about that. I'll save that for the end of this video. First, I want to go over the amazing Giants win against the Browns. You know, it's really invigorating to have this win. Keeps me feeling like there's hope for a season, uh, not expecting playoffs or Super Bowls or anything. You know, if the Giants were 3-0, and I'd be there. Maybe even at 2-1, and if we pulled off a decent win against the Commanders, I, I'd be like, yeah, playoffs, this team's looking good. But right now, I, I think they'll be competitive, but, you know, can't say anything more than that. Going into this week was so bad after last week. And then you start off this game with fumbling the opening kickoff. It gets recovered by the Browns. And then their first play ends up being like a 30-yard touchdown pass to Amari Cooper. A great catch by Amari Cooper, too. Great throw. Like, it was just a great play by the Browns there. And then shortly thereafter, the Giants get the ball back. And Daniel Jones throws this horrible interception that ends up getting overturned to a due to a roughing the passer call. So thankfully the refs uh, gave the Giants that call. And then after that, the offense just did amazing. Malik Neighbors was a huge, huge piece in why the Giants won this game. He made so many crucial catches, so many amazing catches. I mean, the one everyone's going to point to is where he jumps over the guy. The guy has his hands on the ball, and Malik Neighbors catches it in front of the guy's helmet, pulls the ball away from him, and make sure his feet are in bounds still. Just absolutely professional play by a great wide receiver. There's no other way I put it. And uh, he's breaking records. I, I think uh, I saw that he's the only wide receiver in NFL history to have the three-game start he's had with the huge number of receptions, uh, the 250 yards, and now three touchdowns because two of them came in this game. I mean... <laughs> this guy is getting a great start to his career. And uh, finally being able to put a win to it, even better. Uh, the offense, I, I thought, looked pretty good overall. Daniel Jones looked pretty good overall. Singletary, uh, I think he had the one other fumble. But otherwise, I mean, like I said about the week one performance, he's a decent sub in for Saquon. Uh, I don't notice too much of a drop-off in the running game uh, with him out there versus when Saquon was out there. I think he's a very competent running back. Uh, huge help to this team. Uh, he had the one touchdown early on, and he could have had another touchdown, but uh, in that moment, he technically made the smart decision, even though, you know, fantasy owners and uh, gamblers around the world uh, did not appreciate that. But, um, yeah, uh, it was a good move by him. He had a great game. Uh, offensive line still holding up. And, yeah, the offense, I mean, they were kind of a weird group. Uh, they put those three touchdowns up. I felt like almost right after that and put the game at a great spot for the Giants, but didn't do too much after that. The defense uh, held strong throughout the game. Uh, they did end up allowing the one bad drive uh, that they also had the two-point conversion on. But otherwise, I want to talk about this defensive line. All this talk uh, from the first two weeks of like, ah, this line isn't there. You invest all this money in this defensive line and what they're even doing. I thought the Browns had a decent offensive line. Maybe wrong on this, but our defensive line ate up their offensive line. Every single one of the guys on the Giants' defensive line did something today. You had Aziz Ojolari getting in there. I think he had the fumble recovery. Brian Burns in the photo here, just getting that huge sack fumble. Kayvon Thibodeau, I think, got in on a half sack, but... That, and he had so many pressures. And Dexter Lawrence getting in there, as always. His two sacks. Absolutely dominant performance by the Giants defensive line. And a huge reason why the Giants ended up winning this game. Because the offense did let the gas up a little bit, but the defense never wavered. The defense continued strong the entire game. Just the one slip up on the one drive. But otherwise, the defense showed up today. In an insane way. <laughs> the, I mean, this is the type of defensive performance the Giants are going to need uh, against Dallas on Thursday. That's not going to be an easy game. The Giants are really going to have to go in there and keep all the momentum from this, bring it right on over. It's only a couple days away. 
and we'll just hope for the best. Uh, this this win was huge for the team. Uh, one and two looks a lot better than zero oh and three. Uh, you got to get some wins where you can get them. This was a game where the Giants, uh, I thought, had a chance to win going in. They were able to get it done. And I would have said the same thing about last week. Um, I did say the same thing about uh, last week. I, I said uh, if we lose to the Commanders, the season's looking over. And at the time, it was. It was looking completely over and um, still holding true to that in a way. I'm not expecting playoffs still, but I think the Giants can have a competitive season. And, you know, if there ends up being a light playoff field, maybe the Giants sneak in. Uh, but they'd have to pull off, like, another upset or two. Uh, probably two more upsets. Uh, beating Dallas, uh, at putting the team at 2-2, two and two, that, w- that would be a big one. I'd be back in. I think the Giants would have a decent shot at playoffs if uh win on Thursday. I uh, wouldn't call it a guarantee like I would if uh, they could have one other win uh, on top of that, like the Commanders. But uh, I keep mentioning uh, I want to go back in time, back to that game. Uh, cause I didn't get my recap video out on it. That game, I don't even blame the defense, uh, that much for the commanders game. Uh, I think they could have done better, but seven field goals should win you a game. If you don't allow any touchdowns, right? They only scored 21 points. That is a fairly reasonable performance from a defense to only allow 21 points by the other team. Now the defense did themselves no favors. They could not get off the field on third down against the Commanders, and they allowed some very long drives because of that. They got a good amount of pressures and sacks, too. Uh, I'm, I don't remember a ton of turnovers. Uh, they just kind of played a consistent game. Uh, and, yeah, the, I mean, Washington didn't even punt in that game. <laughs> they just kicked field goals. <laughs> so that was a, it was an interesting performance there. Uh, I blame the offense on the Commanders game. Uh, You think to Singletary's fumble in that game, that was a back-breaking play that really hurt things. Uh, So many other um, offensive drives that kind of got stalled out for no reason when they were going fairly well. Uh, And then the big one, the big one, the big reason the Giants lost against the Commanders, no kicker. Uh, (laughs) You know, the kicker injury going into the game, uh, not able to have our punter just immediately sub in and no backup kicker on hand. Uh, Brian Dable got properly grilled for that in the post-game interviews. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, the kicker uh, we had uh, with the Browns, even that replacement, I mean, he missed a 48-yarder. Uh, you, you expect a kicker to make that nowadays. So, you know, it's, who's to say if we had the backup kicker that – he would have made all the extra points and it would have been 21-21. But if that was the case, if he even made one of them, there was a point in the game where we were up and we were there. And that's why Malik Neighbors was put in that spot where he was able to drop the pass on fourth down. And Malik Neighbors last week had a great performance, an incredible performance. I actually think his performance uh, against the Browns was better, though, because he made some insane catches against the Browns. Whereas against the Commanders, he was just very consistent. Uh, he had some good catches in that game. Had some big plays, but, you know, much more just being a good NFL wide receiver and route running stuff instead of making insane catches like he made against the Browns. And I, I think that's really what killed the Giants uh, last week against the Commanders. The, just some bad planning and some, the, an offense that couldn't just get things done consistently. Uh Take that into this week, started off slow, but then the offense really did get its job done there uh, with the three touchdowns, and it felt like they were all in a row too. You know, unlike uh, against the Commanders, they they felt so spaced out, and so many drives, so many offensive drives just got killed due to like something like a Devin Singletary fumble or um, having to go for it on fourth down, and you know the Giants couldn't pick up their two point conversions against the Commanders. Uh, you know, that's not helpful. You got to pick those up. That that would have made up for the kicking woes. So just an unfortunate uh, performance last week. Bring that into this week. The Giants got it done against the Browns. It was an amazing performance by then overall. Uh, just got to carry it over. It needs to get carried over uh, throughout the season, farther into the season. It was a good performance by the Giants. 
They need to keep that momentum. They need to take it into Dallas. Or I think uh, it's a home game for the Giants, actually. But they need to keep that momentum going into the Dallas game. It's going to be huge. We, we can't turn around off this nice win and just lose 40 to nothing to Dallas and expect everything to be good because then we're all sitting on that horrible loss for 10 days if it's a horrible loss. But if it's a competitive game, I think we're feeling about what I'm feeling right now. Like, all right, Giants could still be competitive throughout the year, but not expect anything crazy. If the Giants somehow pull off a win against Dallas, they haven't looked amazing this season. They're also one and two. That would be huge. <laughs> that would be incredible. Uh, that would be one of those things that would start to revive the season. Just that commander's loss was so bad. Uh, I, I would need another very incredible performance by the Giants to do it, maybe even after that. But we'll see. That would be huge. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember the last time the Giants like just beat Dallas. I think it was 2016 because... Um, other games, I think like the end of 2020, uh, the Giants beat Dallas. It was a great game. Uh, I, I do remember that one. But uh, the excuse is like, oh, but the, it was the backup quarterback. I, I don't think uh, the Giants have beat Dak Prescott since 2016. So if the Giants go in there and just get that done, that would be huge. And the Giants have this weird thing with Dallas. I, I feel like they either get blown out or it's super competitive and they barely pull it off. Uh, you think of like the Thanksgiving, actually, uh, I think both the games in 2022, if I remember correctly, uh, had that. Oh no, one of the, ah, I forget, but anyway, uh, there, there's been some very competitive games against Dallas in the past. Uh, I do remember one being on Thanksgiving that was incredibly competitive. And then there was another one in the Joe Judge era where it was a high scoring game and the Giants really could have gotten it, but just couldn't uh, get it done. Uh, I think there was one really bad uh, fake field goal penalty in that one. That cost the Giants. So, I mean, I think that's what we're looking at here going into the Thursday Dallas game. It's either going to be really competitive or really bad for the Giants. I, I think if the Giants end up winning it, it's going to be because it's really competitive and the Giants just get one play when they really need it. And that one play could be from Malik Neighbors or Brian Burns. I mean, what, those two new additions to this team made their name against the Browns. And uh, hopefully they can do the same against the Cowboys next week. See you guys in the next one.